When someone thinks about the time that they grew up in, or even any time that they lived through, what they tend to think about the most is their fondest memories. When you're looking back at a time you lived in, you shouldn't be thinking of the stressful parts. The wars we fought. Political scandals. Or the race riots and violence. I think we need to be looking at the things that made us happiest. That's why we decided to focus on the most nostalgic parts of the 90s. Whether it's your favorite music, your closest friends, the best movies, or even a picture book you loved as a child. The 90s was the foundation of new styles and entertainment that are still prevalent now. New popular music artists emerged such as Nirvana, Beastie Boys, Green Day, and as portrayed in our mural, the infamous Tupac Shakur. Although there are many movie production companies that were still popular, DreamWorks has movies from children and adults that we watched and enjoyed still to this day. Yeah, last week I was in Walmart in the DreamWorks section, and I bought myself a two-pack of those movies, Ants and American Beauty. Wait, did you just say you bought Tupac? Hasn't he been gone a long time? No, no, that's not what I'm saying. What are you, an idiot? I'm saying that I bought a two-pack of movies. Oh my god. How While Nirvana and Green Day are big, the one genre of music that's growth outpaced the growth of all other genres was hip-hop. Starting in 1991, rap group N.W.A.'s album, Ephil Four Zagen, became the first rap album to become number one on Billboard's Hot 100, representing the beginning of a cultural shift in music preference towards rap and hip-hop. According to a study from the Royal Society in Britain, 1991 also had the largest overall shift in the type of music on the Hot 100 from 1960 to 2010. And if there were one single icon to represent, who could it be other than the legendary Tupac Shakur? LA Weekly called Tupac's third album, Hip Hop Gospel, and writer Jeff Weiss said that for West Coast teenagers in the 1990s like him, Pac's album All Eyes on Me was, quote, our Bible, and that calling it a Bible was the only appropriate analogy. Tupac's persona represented the duality of hip-hop culture. In his first two albums, he rapped about the thug life and bragged about his role in the drug trade and killing police. But during his prison sentence following his 1995 conviction, Tupac drafted a letter rejecting the thug life and telling his followers to improve themselves. His final album, Eyes on Me, would take a different, softer tone. When he tragically left in 1996, a part of hip-hop died. But they say he's still looking down on us from heaven. If you ask me, you can criticize Tupac's music, but you can't criticize him as a person. I'm sorry, did you just say you ain't criticize Tupac? What? No! Why would I say that? The ants go marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. We slaughter termites just for fun, hurrah, hurrah. That's a good segue, though. You ever see that movie, Ants by DreamWorks? Yeah, man, that movie's the whole reason I wanted to put the DreamWorks logo on the mural in the first place. At the top right of the mural, you will see the DreamWorks logo. DreamWorks was founded in October 12, 1994. In 1994, three of the most influential people in the entertainment world joined forces to form DreamWorks. The best known was director Steven Spielberg, creator of some of the most popular films at the time. Some of the DreamWorks' very first movies were Rouse Hunt, which released in theaters on December 19, 1997. And don't forget Ants. It was the first new film studio in 60 years. The three founders produced TV shows, record music, and video games in addition to animated films. That's a lot. Everything has been on a grand scale since the company was started. No kidding. Talk about such as water fountains, masseuses, and free lunches. The studio was built to lure away animators from Disney, and it succeeded. Lots of people enjoyed watching DreamWorks movies because they had a lot of nostalgia, and kids and adults like to watch them. Yeah, I'd say that DreamWorks is certainly a part of my nostalgia. You know, a while ago, me and my friends made a contraption for killing ants called the Pain Blow Squish. Then we watched Ants and realized what we were doing was wrong. I'm sorry. You made a rainbow fish? No, Hattie, that's not what I'm saying. The person who made a rainbow fish was Mark Fister. Rainbow fish. So beautiful With scales of every color and hue Yeah, Mark Fister, that guy, uh, he wrote the Rainbow Fish books and illustrated them too. The books were made for children, the star character being a fish with shiny foil scales that catch the light named Rainbow Fish. The book was originally released in German in 1992. 
And as of 2013, the book has sold over 30 million copies. The book was originally published in Germany and Switzerland, but was quickly translated to English by J. Allison James, where it was sold by the millions to the United States. Its flashy and cute storyline made the book incredibly popular. Rainbow Fish also offers a wholesome message about the importance of individuality while not being shellfish. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> Very true, Hattie. You know, I really think that Rainbow Fish was just really precious to the childhood of so many kids growing up in the 90s who just remember it as a great book that their parents read to them. So I think with our mural looking back at nostalgia, though this may not be what people think of immediately when they think of the 90s, it's certainly the favorite thing of a lot of 90s kids. So what type of mural would you say our mural is? It's argumentative. What we really want people to take away is that arguing about politics and thinking about war isn't really what we need to be doing. Yeah, as Bob Ross once said, when you indulge negative emotions, you're giving something outside yourself power over your happiness. You can choose not to let the past upset you. And, and that's, that's what our mural's all about. about.